In this video, I'm going to show you how to test your application against a real database. And so the magic behind this is test containers. And so you're going to need to install the test containers NPM package, but test containers is also available for other languages as well. So let's have a look at the website here. So you can see that there's lots of different packages for lots of different languages. So I've also used this in Go and it works really well. So I'm using a Postgres database, so I need to use the Postgres package as well. But you can see down here that we have lots of different packages that we can use. We have Postgres, Kafka, Mongo, Kubernetes, Elasticsearch, Console, Nginx, lots of different packages. See, over 50 modules that we can use. So if we dive back into the code, you can see that I have the test containers PostgreSQL package installed as well. So the first thing that you're going to do is choose your framework that you're going to use to test. So in my case, I'm using Vitest. So you can see here that my test command is going to run Vitest, but you could also do this in Cypress or Playwright as well. So the next thing that you want to do is to have a setup script. So this is setup.ts. And when I run this test command here, this setup script is going to run automatically. So I've installed my Postgres container. This does use Docker under the hood. So you need to make sure you have Docker running. In fact, let me make sure I have that running now. So I can show you an example. And I'm going to let that start up. And then I have a migrate function. I'm using Drizzle ORM, but you're going to want to use the migrate function from whatever database package you're using. Then I'm going to use the before each and after each hooks, and this is going to set up our container and then tear it down again once the test is finished. I'm also setting a bunch of environment variables here. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm using this env nextjs package here from T3 open source. And this is going to require that I have these environment variables set. If I don't, then the application is just going to shut down with an error. So I'm setting these environment variables here. I'm just setting most of these here to NA. Even this database URL, we're going to reset this later on. So you can just set this to whatever you like, really. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to declare my container. And then this is going to be of type started PostgreSQL container. Then in our before each hook, we're going to have an async function. And this is going to call the new Postgres container dot start. And then this is going to return a container. It's going to return a started container. So you can see here now we're going to overwrite our container up here. Then we're going to reset our database URL. So container comes with some methods that we can use. One of those methods is get connection URI. So then we can use our database connection string inside of our tests or whatever we're doing really. Then I'm going to get my setup DB and I'm importing this from server slash DB. So let's have a look at that file as well. So you can see my setup function here just takes a database URL. Then it's going to get my Postgres connection and it's going to use my Postgres connection to create a new instance of Drizzle with my schema. Then it's going to return the database and the connection. So we're just getting the database out of this. And the reason that we need to do that is because we need to run the migrate function. And the migrate function is just going to create all of our tables and everything for us. And then finally, when we've finished all of our tests, we're going to tear down our container. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of a test. So this is a pretty crappy test and it doesn't really do much. I just wanted to illustrate the sort of things that you could do with this sort of test. And the benefit of doing this is that you don't need to mock out your database. You can just use your application inside of your test as you would when you're developing your UI or you're developing your backend. And so it makes your tests a lot simpler and it makes them more robust as well. So this is just a Stripe webhook and we're calling the upsert product function. And then we're going to call this with a mock object. So you can see here, I've just mocked out this object here. So this is an example of a payload from the Stripe webhook. Then we're going to get the product from the database. So you can see here, I'm calling a function that uses the database. So this function here calls database and it's just importing database from our database package here. So this function isn't doing anything special because we're using it in a test. This function is the same function that I call from the real webhook. 
Then we're going to get our products. We're just going to get the zeroth value. And then we're going to make an assertion on what it should equal. So let's run this test with pmpm test. And the first time you run this, it's going to take a little minute. So you can see here that it took 5.9 seconds. So if we make a change to this file or we just save it, it's going to run again, but it's going to run much faster this time. And that's because it doesn't need to build the image. So you can see here, it took nearly four seconds to run. Let's go have a look at Docker. And you can see that Docker starts up this container for us. And we actually get all of our logs in here as well. So you can see here, it's starting on port 8080. And then our client connected. And then the container shuts down because the test finished. So if we have a look in our images, you can see that we have a Postgres image here. And this is the image that we're going to use to start up the container. So if I just delete this, this is what you're going to start with. So we save this and now it needs to download the image again. So it's going to take even longer this time. So you can see here, it took 21 and a half seconds because it needed to download the image. But if we save this again, it should really only take that four seconds that it took before. And yeah, pretty much bang on. And that's how you can very easily test your application against a real database or really any other service that there is a test containers module for. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below if you've used test containers before and what your experience was like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.